most difficult thing was we didn't know how long it was going to be. They said originally it would be a month or so, although actually it was only a, a few days, a, f a week or something. So I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. I, I just sort of took things as they came. I just went along with everything because it was the easiest thing to do. Really. So did you get to spend some time with your mum in that last week? Yeah, I took... Um, I had It was the weekend anyway, so I could see her. I didn't go to... I, I had a concert at Orchestra, which I still did, um, but I saw a really good friend of mine who I just cried to and had a nice chat with, and I visited my mum both days. And then I went into school on Monday, because at that point we thought it would be quite a long time. But then I got a text from my dad saying I probably ought to go because it would only be a few days, so I took the rest of the day off school and took Tuesday and Wednesday off too. And it was Wednesday evening that she passed away. Children can show signs of grief in many different ways. Of course, there will be tears. There may be anger. They may regress, thumbsucking, bedwetting, wanting to revert to bottles, baby food. They may become the class clown. They may become the class bully. Children definitely do grieve in their own way. I don't know what it'd be like for a young child, but I think teenagers, <laughs> they might even grieve more than adults because you, you feel more emotional as a teenager anyway. So, and there's just so much more going on and you definitely, yeah, you do, you do grieve as a child. They can seem withdrawn and unsociable. They could experience bedwetting or nightmares. They may be unable to concentrate. They can act impulsively. They may fail to complete their homework. They can have difficulty listening and being focused. They can demonstrate recklessness. Complain of headaches and stomach aches. They could appear overly talkative, disorganised. They may be unable to follow directions. I think the worst point is actually a few weeks later when it sort of kicks in because like my mum had been away for a few weeks before. Like I, I was used to not seeing her and I was used to only seeing her at the hospital. So not seeing her for a few weeks, she could have still been alive. But I think, because subconsciously you might not realise the loss, but I think after a few weeks you kind of like really realise it and I think that's when it's worst. Mm. And it's kind of hard to describe how it feels because like the words for emotions, there's only a few words like angry, sad, happy. Um, you do feel really angry quite a lot. You can feel just really empty or just really frustrated and sort of ask questions like why, why me, like why was it my mum? And for me, I, why did it happen in such a horrible way? Because for me, it was really tough because I'd had all the struggle of having to visit her in hospital. And then to have the fact that she was better and to have, be so happy that she was home and have told everyone and sort of celebrated that she was better. To go from that to actually losing her was made it even harder. And that, that's what got me so much. That's why I felt so bad. Mm. You say angry. Who do you think you were angry at? I don't know who I was angry at. I was kind of just angry at what had happened to me, angry at... I don't know, sort of, I was sort of angry at myself as well that I had, because before she had passed away, in the years before that I'd been just like a normal teenager basically and I hadn't been the most pleasant to her and I felt angry at myself. I felt, I don't remember feeling angry at a person, I just felt just angry in general. <laughs> they may talk to or about their loved one in the present tense. They may imitate gestures of the person who died. They may idolise the person who died, putting them on a pedestal. They may create their own unique spiritual beliefs. They may worry excessively about their health and the health of others. They may become fixated and preoccupied with death. It really has changed me losing my mum. Um, I think for good because it's made, I used to be really reliant on her and I've become a lot more independent. And I think having a past like that, it kind of, 
it, ma- it can kind of makes you more human. It makes you more of a person. You have a bit of a story and you, you know, once you've got through it, you know, I've got through that. So that means I can get through more in the future. I mean, it makes you, I mean, little, little things that might upset other people really don't mean a thing to me because I've, I know if things have been a lot worse. So it kind of makes you more kind of resilient and able to withstand things. And it makes me see things more positively now. And it, I'm kind of more grateful for what I have now because I wasn't before. And they always say once you lose something, you don't know how much you value something until you lose it. And that really is the case. So I'm now kind of looking for what I'm grateful of now and kind of making the most of when things are going well. I think it's always been in my head, what would my mum want me to be doing right now? What would what would she have wanted me to do? And I think it kind of gives you more drive to do good things. And you don't want to do anything bad because you know she'd like to think you wouldn't be doing anything bad.